Yes, another 90s video. Well, kind of. So, um, sorry I'm late. Uh, I went to Japan and I actually have a short video on that uh, coming up here. Um, sort of have some related news on that in regards to the channel, or at least a video in relation to the channel, so uh, that's pretty cool. But um, uh, before I get started, I wanted to show you my sort of retro battle station that I've set up here in my bedroom, which is where it has to be under orders, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So um, uh, before we get started on uh, this particular video, I just wanted to kind of show off this because we're going to be using it, uh, to, so to speak. So the computer in this, I have, I have several computers, but this one is a K62. Uh, 500 and I, I forget what I have it clocked to at the moment. I have it down clocked a bit um, and it's running Quake 1 in DOS. Um, the beige uh, Radio Shack speakers I found at a flea market. Um, the little audio mixer thing underneath the right speaker there. I'm pointing at it. I'm standing behind the camera. Um, is not hooked up yet. A friend of mine up in Washington mailed that to me. Said, hey, uh, this looks pretty retro and you probably want it so I'm going to mail it to you. And I said, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> Yeah, kind of, uh, kind of interesting. So I got to figure out what that is and how to power it. And like, there's nothing on this thing. The brand is Success Maker. But uh, anyway, this table, basically, this desk for me needs to basically be nearly strictly, not quite strictly, if you look around, but basically strictly 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, maybe mid 2000s uh, stuff. This is my retro desk. Pretty excited to have it. Found the desk on Craigslist if you're here in the US. I think there might be Craigslist uh, in other places, but um, we have Craigslist here in the US and um, it's actually started here in the Bay Area, I believe, but uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to uh, get this all set up. I, I was hoping to find a beige one, but I found that black power center down there. Um, it's apparently was sold as home theater equipment, so sure, why not? But I wanted to get that OptiQuest monitor up off the desk a little bit. And I think, I don't think I've actually shown this monitor in use. Um, you've probably seen the back of it from uh, my other desk. The workbench that I normally work on is on the other side of this desk. So I've had to really rearrange some stuff. Um, and then when it was time to start getting ready to do another video, I wanted to get that done and have it do a time release so that it would release while I was in Japan. And I just didn't have time, unfortunately. So. Uh, here I am. I think I'm three weeks late, but what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get a video out here. Um, I'm hoping this video will come out Wednesday or Thursday, and then I'm going to try and get another video out the following Sunday or Monday, depending on how my weekend goes. And then that should get me back on track because I'm trying really hard to stick to a um, bare minimum of a video every other week. So uh, what are we doing? We are going to be unboxing this. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is Planet X3 from uh, the 8-Bit Guy, and I've never opened it. I've actually had it for a couple of months, and uh, uh, I want to open this thing up. I really don't know much about what comes in this. Um, obviously, this computer would run it just fine, most likely. It is a um, more or less DOS computer. It, it's really kind of too fast for DOS, but uh, I use it for DOS and, and some other testing and stuff like that. And the um, the K62500 is kind of neat because you can go to the BIOS and set the clock speed to 160, 500 to 166 megahertz. So it's it's fun for um, just uh, just trying different games and, and exploring uh, uh, different clock speeds and stuff like that. So uh, we need to get out the new XT, and uh, this will probably be the last new XT video for a little while. Um, I do have some uh, Linuxy uh, new XT stuff uh, that I have in the works. But uh, uh, I want to flip back over to the 486 because I really want to do, I have the processor upgrade to do on that one. I have the, in fact, the keen eye might actually see. No, you know what? The camera can't see it. The processor is um, sitting on top of my 3D printer, uh, just to the left of the monitor. But um, that's an AMD processor with a 16K level one cache. So I want to see how that does versus the 8K level one cache. And then I have a uh, 256K of level two cache that I want to put in there. Run some benchmarks, that kind of thing, see how it does. So. And it's an upgrade I want to do the 46 anyway. So anyway, let's get this uh, K62 off the retro desk and uh, bring out the new XT. Uh, let's unbox, un blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so let's go ahead and unbox this and then we'll switch um, computers and uh, get this thing installed. Again, I've never played this game. I've never watched a how-to on how to play it. I 
probably super suck at it, but uh, come along with me and laugh at me and point your finger if you want. I'm okay with it. All right, Planet X3, we need a knife. How about an expansion slot cover instead? I mean, these things are sharp enough to cut a freaking car in half, so usually okay. All right, na 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 na. Cool. So this is actually my first uh, like homebrew anything that I've really ever purchased. Um, so I'm pretty excited, as you can hear by the sound of my voice. So excited all the time. Uh, uh, okay. All right, so maybe it's not that sharp, but how, can you, for the old timers out there that were building computers back in the day, how many times have you sliced your finger? Maybe not on the expansion slot cover, but remember those ones that were like, uh, like part of the case and you had to like twist it out like that and then pull it out? Uh, those ones I've definitely cut my finger on more than one occasion. That is super cool. Look at that. Uh, so the box has uh, a nice sort of matte finish to it. I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, just has a really nice high quality uh, feel to it. That's really cool. And uh, so as you can see, the uh, specifications there. I can't see it from where I'm sitting, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, IBM PC XT incompatible to 256K of memory. Uh, 360K or 720K floppy drive. I gotta try and play this on my IBM 5140 uh, convertible uh, laptop. And heck, if I can, I could probably get it to run, but the keyboard on that thing is screwed, screwed up. Um, but uh, my first video, the Grid 1520, um, you know, now that I think about it, that laptop has an XT keyboard plug on the back and I have an XT keyboard. So I should totally do uh, a quick video. Maybe that'll be my next video, uh, just a follow up to Planet X3 really quick um, for this weekend. Or maybe I'll try and squeeze it in next week. I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. All right, so flip it over. Very nice. Oh, you know what? Hold on. There we go. <laughs> I'm sitting in a 90s era chair, I think. It's uh, <laughs> a little creaky, but uh, yeah, look at that. Really cool. And again, it's just this really great box art. The story so far, after 12 years of hibernation aboard the EVCPO, you and your crew awaken just as you arrive to Planet X3, an uninhabited planet in a distant star system. However, the Terran High Command didn't know, uh, didn't know when you started your journey until all those years ago. Didn't, wait, hold on. When you started your journey all those years ago, the star system was in fact inhabited after all. Catching up on logs transmitted to your ship during the flight, you learned that just a year ago we discovered the protoids on planet X2 and defeated them. Anyway, I don't think you want to hear me read the rest of it like that. Let's open the box. Uh, nice. Ooh, I forgot that I got the cassette. Yes, I have a cassette player. Do you want me to do cassette? <laughs> well, I plan on doing uh, some audio gear, but uh, I would love some feedback. Audio gear, yay, nay. I mean, I'm gonna do it anyway, but <laughs> I would love to hear some, uh, some feedback. So um, yeah, very cool. <laughs> I'm digging the red uh, cassette. That's, that's pretty wonderful. Uh, a couple of track titles, Journey to Planet X3, Apprehension, Exploring Planet X3, Building a Colony, Jungle Fever, Winter is Coming, Valiant Fighters, Crushing Defeat, and Credits. Side B, well, more titles. So yeah, so this is probably gonna be the ad-lib version, I'm guessing, but uh, I never know, there might be the PC speaker version in there too. Um, now, the version that I bought only came on, at, wow, an actual 720K. I watched his making of this and I forgot that these are actually real 720K uh, uh, discs, so that's very cool. Um, and then finally, oh yeah, that's right, he includes the label 
for a uh, five and a quarter inch. If you want to make your own five and a quarter inch, he includes a label, which is super awesome. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, this artwork and this manual is just freaking awesome. So there's a forward in here. Thank you for purchasing Planet X3 for MS-DOS computers. This project was started in November 2017, immediately following the release of Planet X2 for the Commodore 64. Um, at the time, I had no idea how to program assembly language on x86 microprocessors. Um, yeah, I'll have to sit down and read some more of this, but uh, just great album art. Um, you know, this is how they made it back in the day. Really cool. I love it. And you know, I like to smell things. It smells nice. <laughs> yeah, really cool. So now, of course, I'm not gonna sit here and read the book, uh, oh, that's cool. So in here it talks about sound modes. The, the why and how. PC speaker, Tandy voice, OPL, LPT, AdLib, which is what we're gonna be using. I love this tank art, that's super cool. I know, I'm like nerding all over this. But, um, oh yeah, cool, soundtrack cassette. As with Planet X2, we couldn't deliver this under par, so of course the game uh, a game of this caliber must have a cassette with the soundtrack. We had originally hoped that, this sound, that the game could include full Roland MT32 support, but as progress and development showed, uh, it became apparent that the targeted platform and storage memory limitations rendered this impossible. Um, my goal with Planet X3 was to bring the music... Simply, I'm just curious if he uh, talked about what kind of sound is actually on this cassette. So uh, uh, I'm not seeing it. It says, ah, uh, the cassette contains approximately 30 minutes per side with music from both the MT32 and AdLib versions uh, Noah has created. Even if this isn't dynamic and interactive like in Dune 2, uh, it should provide you with some nice atmosphere while playing. So that's really cool. I'm digging that. Um, but yeah, this is, this is how you got manuals back in the day, young, whipper, young whippersnappers. This is the Tactical Manual Extraterrestrial Exploration Survival Guide. Confidential. Oh, that means I can't show it to you. <laughs> but, um, so let's see, what is this? He does say confidential. So this looks like basically just a quick starting guide. Um, and there are some uh, uh, ma maps in here, it looks like, of the various levels. So that's really cool. Nice. Absolutely lovely. So naturally, I'm not going to read the instructions at all, which I probably should, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and switch computers, put this in, copy it to the local storage in the new XT, and play it. I'm not gonna play this right off the disc. Oh, he also includes, I think with all versions, uh, you can download an image of the game and write it to a floppy yourself. Um, so that way if this one gets destroyed or something like that, you can do that. My plan is basically to um, use this disc as minimally as possible and probably go ahead and make a new floppy um, for this that I can use in other computers so that this one doesn't get damaged. Yeah, definitely want to listen to this at some point. Super neat. Okay, we are back after that little montage. Uh, let's go ahead and power on. Heh, <laughs> I'll never get tired of that. All right, looks like the screen recorder is working. And we are booting up. Blam, DOS Max doing its thing, Shell Max doing its thing, Cute Mouse doing its thing. I don't think this game supports a mouse, but we're gonna find out. So let's put this baby in.
And uh, let's see, how did I set this up before? Nothing there. All right, so I guess it was just the C drive. So did I make a directory called games or something? I did. Oh, right. <laughs> We're just gonna sit here and wait because you're slow. That's okay. All right, now, unfortunately, uh, and I'm probably gonna have to tweak my um, audio settings. I'm kind of doing it live, but uh, the audio is going directly into my capture. And I, unfortunately, I don't really have a way to split it into my awesome speakers here right now. So, um, and I'll probably need to reach back and adjust the volume on the ad lib, but uh, let's find out. So you might hear like double audio or something here. So let's make a directory called Planet X3. Uh, let's go to the A drive, see what's on it. Okay, so uh, no folders or anything like that. So we're gonna uh, do X copy, A colon, oh, just do star dot star, C colon backslash games backslash planet X3. Several days later. So it's been like a week and Jason forgot to record the audio because he did it wrong. So he's gonna play some more uh, Planet X3. See you later. All right, all right, enough of that. Okay, anyway. Um, so Lucky is exactly right. Um, I did a bunch of gameplay uh, for this video um, nearly a week ago and work has just been kicking my rear end and I just really haven't had time to get around to this, but I'm trying to get back on track. So let's play some Planet X3. I was gonna, I considered doing the video with no audio and I'm like, no, I just, I can't, I just can't do it. Uh, the plus side is, is I have now played a little more Planet X3 and uh, got a better idea of how to play it. I'm still terrible at it. Um, but that's not because it's a bad game. It is a fantastic game, especially considering what it was written for. Um, David Murray, the 8-bit guy, really did a great job on this. All right, so let's play some Planet X3. Adlib. Yeah, I doubt my lav might fix it up, but uh, when you first run this, it does a little bloop bloop, which is uh, is pretty cool. And man, this VGA album art is, or album art, this uh, VGA uh, uh, pixel art is just, just really, really nice. Uh, absolute kudos out to uh, the, uh, the the dev team for, uh, I don't know why I made air quotes, because what I, what I mean by that is like, you know, everybody that has a hand in making this game, so. Um, I am going to change the difficulty to easy because, well, I've already said why. I am terrible, especially at these types of games. Well, let's get started. So at least now I kind of know what to do. All right, so you start off and the very first thing you should do is uh, take stock of your minerals, gas, and energy. And uh, so what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to build a uh, smelter. And then I'm gonna hit tab. This switches over to the other builder and I'm going to build a factory. All right, and then I can hit tab again. You can see the other guy is doing his thing. And I am going to build a gas refinery. And uh, the instructions say to build it on top of a volcano. All right, so we need to switch over here. And he's about done, so we can quickly come over here and we can see this guy finished up. So that's great. And then one thing I found is um, I like to go ahead and bulldoze with Z. Um, just some of the plants that are just really close by. Oh, uh, Z, just to clean some stuff up here. And then we're gonna build a solar station. Uh, let's just build one there. All right, tab back over to our other tank guy, our little builder dude. 
and there is some minerals up here. So we can bulldoze that and pick up that with P. And uh, you just drop it off. You just put it right there, Boop. disappears, which is fine. There's some more uh, like high yield minerals down here. So we can bulldoze that, pick this up, come back up here. Drop that off. All right, bulldoze that. You can pick the rocks up too for minerals, but when you got these high yield stuff, it's best to just pick these up and use these. And we are just trying to get as much minerals as possible. Um, and so right now our minerals is maxed out at 255. Oh, can't bulldoze that. All right, we'll pick it up. Just drop it off. All right, bulldoze, pick up. And uh, the instructions say that you basically have about 10 minutes to sort of set up your base before you start getting attacked. So drop that off and you can just drop it off anywhere around here. Just anywhere next to it is all that you really need. So let's go ahead and build another solar panel. We can tab over the other guy. And I think that's it, all the minerals that we have. Oh, we got a few more down here, but we don't really need minerals at the moment. Uh, that said, we can go ahead and grab that one pretty easily. All right, drop that off. All right, now we need to start building uh, sentry turrets, basically. So. We're gonna go over, we're gonna hit, uh, oh shoot, what is the key? Um, I don't remember what key it is. Um, what key was that? It's not tab. Shoot. All right, reading the manual. A few moments later. So we will page up, page down to here, and we're gonna build a heavy tank. And uh, these build fairly quickly. We're gonna build another one, but then we're gonna move this guy out of the way while that's building. I do like that you can, uh, you know, multitask. All right, so we're back here. We're gonna build another heavy tank. And actually, while that's building, we can switch to a heavy tank. And uh, this part's pretty cool. So most of the enemies come from down here. Um, so I'm gonna kind of try and focus a little more on putting heavy tanks down here. Uh, so let's put this guy right there. So you hit sentry mode, and he goes into sentry mode, which is neat. All right, so we're gonna put another guy. Uh, let's put him right there. Sentry mode, and let's keep building. How are we doing on stuff? We're doing pretty good, so we're gonna build some more heavy tanks. All right. And we'll put that guy right there, I think. Put him on sentry mode. And we want to, we want to protect. Uh, can anybody get to me from here? No. We want to protect from both sides. Actually, let's put a sentry up here by my gas refinery. All right, let's build a few more heavy tanks. Uh, I'm only gonna play this for about 15 minutes. Uh, I mean, it takes 10 minutes just to get to a point where you start getting attacked. Uh, doing okay, energy's doing okay, so we'll build another heavy tank. And while that's building, we will rotate around to this guy. All right, we got that guy there. I'm gonna put this guy right here, I think. All right. Now, there are a couple little Easter eggs in this game. Uh, I found one of them. I'm not gonna show it here. I think it's better to find stuff like that on your own. Definitely gave me a good chuckle. Um, all right, 
So that's pretty good. All right, we've got plenty of minerals. Gas is definitely running low. Uh, so let's grab a builder. Oops, oh well. You can cancel it, but I'm gonna grab a builder. And there is more gas to refine down here. And we are going to build a gas refinery right there. Rocking out to that sweet ad lib. And we're gonna build another gas refinery right here. Now this area unfortunately is gonna get attacked, but my hope is that uh, uh, there's gonna be enough down here. Uh, or I'll, I'll get enough from this area that it'll be kind of worth it. So I'm also gonna go ahead and build a solar panel. Put it right there. And I don't think the solar panels need to be connected to anything. I, I don't take my word on that. I'm not going to call this a how to play Planet X3. I am the last person you'd want advice from anyway for this game. Uh, let's see here. Oh, darn it. I accidentally built another builder. Oh, well. Um, the enemy loves to like immediately go after builders. So might be a good thing to have a few spares anyway. Okay, so let's go here. We're gonna build um, another heavy tank. You can see my gas slowly going up with my three refineries. Energy holding steady. I think I can shift. Yeah, there we go. So shift tab. Uh, gets you to All right, so we're gonna put you here I think Let's put it there I guess There we go, so I want two sentry tanks down here Got about a minute left before I start getting attacked. Should probably have some walls or something by now, but. Um, uh, let's, try, let's put it here. All right. Uh, do I have enough to build a wall? Maybe. the location. Okay. How much did I use? Wall. Build a wall. Alright, so... So far, I have only ever managed to be on the defensive in this game. I am so bad. Oops. You know what? Can get rid of that. So we should start seeing some bad guys uh, showing up soon. Let's grab this mineral while I can. Ooh. Boop. Kind of taking a chance coming down here. But want that mineral. Alright. I really thought this game would be aggravating with nothing but a keyboard to play it. But, uh, um, man, just really great job. Um, you can kind of move as fast or as slow as you want. Ah! There's a bad guy. Run away. All right, so we're gonna park that guy there and let's make a tank. These build relatively quickly. All right, look 
looking good. All right, so we can s space to auto attack. Uh, so you can't really move and fire at the same time. All right, so we're gonna keep these guys kind of tucked away a little bit so they're not uh, so they're not instantly destroyed. Oh, okay. All right, let's take a look down here by our other. Oh, okay, we got this guy. What's he want? You want some of this? All right. Whoops, well, that was dumb. <laughs> Just shot myself. You know, I wonder if it'd be smart to like build up some barriers, but down here. All right, there should be a walkway. Yep, here it is. Ah. Okay, tank took a little bit of damage. Uh, no way to repair that I'm aware of. Maybe if I park next to the factory? Uh, none that I can see. Uh, if I switch over here and go to my build menu, I build a wall, build, gas refinery, power station, smelter, power station. Radar station. Yeah, this thing uses a crap ton of power. Um, and if you build a missile silo, you apparently also have to build missiles, but you really need the radar station first and it gives you like a pulse and you gotta figure out kind of where that thing is. Uh, so we are going to leave that guy there. And uh, uh, the game also has uh, groups, kind of like if you ever played Homeworld, that's really the, the closest uh, I can I can make a comparison to because it's one of the only games that I've really played that's even remotely like this. Um, one other thing you can do is uh, uh, the manual talks about, uh, you notice the X and Y coordinates down in the lower left corner there. Ugh. All right. Uh, if you can find the enemy base, oh, hello. Come on, baby, come on, come on. Oh, time to go. Go, little tank. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Damn. It's a tough little dude. Anyway, the idea is that you want to keep it, kind of keep an eye on. Let's see, I'm going to try self destruct, see what happens. Boosh! Dang. <laughs> that was pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Uh, all right, that was pretty cool. I actually hadn't done that before. I guess it's got like a little nuclear reactor in it or something. <laughs> uh, that was actually pretty great. I, I like that a lot. All right, so we're gonna build some tanks. Let's see if we can get back to this guy. Now let's see if I can, oop. Don't die, don't die. I'm gonna, I doubt this guy's gonna last long enough, but I'm gonna see if I can get this other, all right, self-destruct is D. Oh, I don't think he saw me. I wanna try and destroy their, oh no. Oh, crap. Yeah, I kinda screwed that one up. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna take a full health tank because it's fun. And we're gonna see if we can get down here. And then we're about over time, unfortunately, so. Get rid of that turret. Got him. Boom! Say goodbye to your base. Anyway, 
The subject, the object of this game is to destroy the enemy bases, and I finally did that. So I guess that's an option, is to just go to go self-destruct your base, or your, uh, your tank. So anyway, there's probably a lot more to this game, and I'm only barely scratching the surface of it. So, um, you know, once again, thanks for watching. We'll go ahead and do my outro here. Um, uh, you know what, I'm gonna save this one because I'm kind of doing sort of okay. Which overwrites my old save. There's only one save, um, there's only one save slot, to my knowledge, so... Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, any constructive feedback, positive or negative, is always appreciated. And uh, we'll be back as soon as possible with the next video. Hopefully get back on track here. Um, again, do apologize for being late. Um, this is uh, uh, just, you know, it's funny getting back in the saddle and, and getting this video done has been uh, pretty cathartic, really. Um, just uh, super fun to do. So uh, thanks for coming along with me all the way to the very end and keep it 90s. Bounch, bounch.